Bigger than some wanted, smaller than others craved, but a budget. So a session ends, another looms, is there consensus? He won Arkansas, he won the South, now he's won a shot at November, will there be a fallout? But first, what role for Arkansas's minority party in the seasons to come? A Newsmaker interview begins Arkansas Week in a moment. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. This is Arkansas Week. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Arkansas Week. We'll go to our panel in just a moment. First, you'll recall that last Friday on our edition, our uh, newsmaker interview was the president pro tem of the Arkansas Senate, representing the Republican Party, of course. Our guest this week, the Senate Minority Leader, Democrat Keith Ingram, Senator Keith Ingram of West Memphis. Senator, thanks very much for being with us. Always, Steve. Your counterpart was, uh, we had just passed, or the General Assembly had just concluded action, the Senate had, on uh, Arkansas Works, the extension of the Medicaid, or expansion, and seemed rather satisfied. Uh, are you? Now you've got the RSA, the Revenue Stabilization Act. We've got a budget in place, about well over $5 billion. You satisfied? Yes, I mean, is there's always things that you're going to want that you didn't get, but overall, I think that uh, number one, I think the story of the fiscal session is that uh, Republicans and Democrats in Arkansas can reach across the aisle and work together for the betterment of our state. Something that Washington could take a uh, uh, certainly a, a lesson from. Uh, great leadership out of uh, uh, Senator Dismang. Uh, so I, I really, I think that's the thing, the message that we need to carry away in Arkansas is that we found a way to s serve our citizens and not our parties. Uh, the, the budget, I think uh, uh, the Democrats managed to convince the governor. Uh, we restored the funding for uh, libraries that had been cut. We restored the money for senior citizens that had been cut. Uh, in the senior citizens centers. So uh, that, along with Arkansas Works, uh, we think has been a pretty good session for Democrats. You couldn't persuade him to add some more money for pre-K? Pre-K, uh, no. Uh, I think that what we need to do with pre-K is, uh, I think education or a special task force needs to look at just how we're spending pre-K now measure its effectiveness, because we know it works, then come up with a funding formula over a few years that we can put money into pre-K, because we're investing dollars uh, in our future, and every study that you read shows that you get a big bang for your buck in doing that. Well, you say studies, study to see how it works, and then you say it works beautifully. It's going to be a political question. A fiscal question in the General Assembly is a political question, ultimately. Yeah, no, no question. I mean, uh, we, we know that if we don't have a healthy workforce that we're not going to be a attractive to uh, people that want to bring industry in or keep industry in Arkansas. We also know that education's a key to that. And so uh, I, I think that we need to educate the, the entire Assembly regarding how pre-K money is being spent and what we can do with additional pre-K money and the impact that it will have ultimately on our Kansans. Are you prepared to say, Senator, that that will be a priority for your caucus, your conference in yes, 2017? Yes, I, th I think that's always been a priority uh, and somehow we've got to convince uh, the Republican majority uh, to take that same interest that, that we have. Are you as comfortable as you have been traditionally over the years with what is now Arkansas Works? Come 2017, the state's percentage goes up. Well, yes, it's still a great deal for Arkansas. As as uh, uh, the health task force, the numbers uh, were pretty dramatic, and I thought that 
uh, Senator Jim Hendren was a tour de force when he went to the well to uh, argue on behalf of Arkansas Works just with the facts and figures uh, and what it means to the state of Arkansas of almost five billion dollars uh, in, in revenue that, that our state would not have if, uh, if we didn't have Arkansas Works. And, and I think too often uh, it's easy in a campaign to be against something, the, you, you don't understand it, you don't understand how it cuts across the budget. Uh, but once you get down here, you learn the effect uh, of, of Arkansas Works and the impact that it has on our entire budget. And I think that's a revelation to a lot of people that get elected. The structure of the budget itself, sir, the governor, the administration's reliance with the General Assembly's uh, consent on one-time monies trouble you? Yes, it has from the start. I, uh, we've been very fortunate that we're in very good economic times, uh, but I've seen pretty tough times around here. Uh, we used a lot of one-time money last year to make the budget work, and we continue to rely on that, and we've done that this year. Uh, I, I, it, it, it is a concern of mine going forward, and I, and I would say I think that uh, Senator Dismang, it's a concern of his, obviously, by wanting to beef up the, the rainy day fund. We've got highways, right, another special session right around the corner, highways. Consensus attained? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of where the governor wants to go with uh, the, the highway program. Again, it's one-time money to sort of patch something, and it's using general revenues to do that. Uh, I, I think there's some good solid plans out there. I think there is a coalition of a group that I've never seen before that has come together uh, to work uh, for a long-term fix to our highway program. Uh, we, we've got to quit thinking in just one-year increments of let's kick this can down the road, let's just have enough money to match the federal match. We, we've got to think what can we do uh, that would be something sustainable 10, 15 years down the road. Cars are getting greater gas mileage. We've got uh, electric cars that now uh, will in, uh, that will be more and more uh, in use. So I think there are some pretty good uh, comprehensive plans that could address this if the governor uh, will allow them to be heard. Well, what's your sense of it? Well, at this point, I think the governor is somewhat, uh, he seems every indication that he wants to go forward with his plan and possibly, I guess, we would try to hear highway again in, in, in January during a regular session. To me, why are we postponing a match that's got to be played? Let's see where everybody is, especially with a coalition that is, it's sort of like Haley's Comet. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a narrow, very narrow window of this overall coalition that has met and talked. I'm not sure they can sustain that uh, come January of next year. Are you predicting some kind of a showdown here, Senator, or I mean, a kind of an Arkansas work style battle over highways? And I think that I would like for it to be heard. I think that the people that have worked on this, uh, there's 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 a number of plans out there, but I think there's one that has a lot of promise. Uh, it should be heard and and be thoughtfully discussed. Uh, and and so uh, you know the governor put money. There is a way out for everybody in this deal uh, to prolong this year at a time. And that the governor put money in the budget, uh, so uh, that there's, that's a fallback position uh, because there's no crisis that's imminent. And unfortunately, sometimes in government, unlike business, you make you, you, you wait till there's a crisis to really be forced to make a decision. You said a moment ago, Senator, that that the session just ended uh, demonstrated that uh, bipartisanship could function, uh, could reign, if you will, uh, in the General Assembly vis-a-vis -vis Arkansas work specifically. The action was always uh, seen to be, at least on the on Arkansas works, was within the Republican conference. Uh, that's where the dispute was. There was near unit. Well, there was unanimity on the part of your your caucus. Yes, and, and I mean, I think that the Democrats can take a lot of satisfaction in that that uh, the moderate wing of the Republican Party has come around to understand uh, 
uh, what we've known all along, that, that Arkansas works is good for Arkansas. We're insuring lives. Uh, people for the first time have health care. They're having to learn uh, how to access that health care because they've never had it before. So yes, from the Democratic side, you know, it's, uh, it, it's it, for us, it was great that, that a number of the Republicans uh, came, came, came over uh, and, and um, uh, embraced uh, Arkansas Works. I mean, the, the, the changes are, are very minor in it. And I applaud the governor for uh, the work that he did to come up with some of the changes to, in order to make it, I guess, as palatable as possible to a, a number of the Republicans. Well, finally this then. What do you see a particular role for your, your conference, both the House and Senate, your party in the General Assembly? It it's, would appear to be fairly solidly in Republican hands for the near future. For the near future. I, I think that uh, obviously the presidential race is going to come into play in Arkansas. Uh, and with Hillary on the ticket, uh, it could make a difference in a number of races. Uh, Hillary will, will be much more, she will get a much higher percentage vote in Arkansas than she did before. Uh, if we look back, we will see that in the House particularly, there were a very number of uh, one and two percent margin wins. Uh, we think we've got a strong field. I think you'll see us pick up seats in the House and I think we'll hold our own in the Senate. Well, uh, your county, I think, was the, well, among the few in Arkansas in which the Democratic vote, if I've got it right, the Democratic vote out in the presidential primaries exceeded the GOP vote. That's, that's correct. It, that's exactly correct. What, what, how would you assess Senator, Secretary Clinton's chances of, of carrying Arkansas? I, I think that she will have a difficult time carrying Arkansas, no question about it, but uh, I think she'll narrow that gap. Uh, the last election cycle, the president was at a 28 percent popularity rating in the state of Arkansas is what he was polling. And we had members that ran for office that would out, out that, that were uh, out polling the president by 17, 18, 19 percent. And how that translate was with Hillary uh, picking up 15, 16, 17, 18 percent to down ballot races is, I think, encouraging for Democrats. Senator Ingram, thanks very much for being with us. Always, Steve. Back with our roundtable in a moment. And in the blink of an eye, almost, we're back with Michael Hiblin of KUAR, Public Radio for Central Arkansas. Andrew DeMillo is Capitol Bureau Chief of the Associated Press. Gents, Andrew, it always looks like, uh, it always looks easier uh, when Sonny Dye comes <laughs> than, than perhaps it was at the time. Anyway, about $5.3 billion budget, and you add in federal funds, it'll go to $12 billion, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, we're you know two two sessions down, one one to no, one to go now. Uh, the legislature this week approved the Revenue Stabilization Act, which is the, the the budget for the state. Like you said, five point three billion dollars, um, and it really just almost almost identical to the to the budget proposal that Governor Hutchinson unveiled earlier this year. Uh, you know, about one hundred forty two point seven million dollar uh, increase in state spending. Most of that is going to the Department of Human Services for Medicaid and also for uh, the foster care system, you know, addressing you know some of the uh, uh, some of the shortfalls in the, in, the, in that system and the the workload there. Um, you're also seeing about a 24 million dollar increase in funding for public schools. Uh, you know, a couple increases here and there, but for the most part, other agencies are you know rel relatively uh, flat funding. Um, and uh, you know, the state's also building up its its rainy day fund, uh, the, the you know, money that the governor's planning on tapping into for highway needs. For the, uh, for the upcoming session, uh, but, you know, but it got through got through pretty you know, pretty easily. You know, a little bit of opposition, a little bit of grumbling, especially from Democrats about uh, there not being additional money for other needs, uh, pre kindergarten being the uh, big complaint that uh, their proposal to increase funding for pre K uh, got rejected. Um, but for the most part, pretty overwhelming support for it. Lean and mean. Yeah, uh, but uh, for the most part, sounds like uh, both parties relatively happy as Senator Ingram said seemed like uh, even Democrats you know despite a few issues overall were uh, satisfied felt like the governor uh, did work 
uh, with Democrats. Uh, and the governor seemed uh, happy overall with how the session worked out. Uh, Andrew, as you said, he pretty much got... Uh, he got his uh, budget. Got his yeah. budget, got things through. Uh, key, he did get the uh, uh, funding here a couple of weeks ago to continue the Medicaid expansion. So now all the plans uh, are focusing now for the highway session to begin May 19th. And uh, a couple of proposals being considered there. The governor's not saying yet uh, exactly what's going to be on the call, so there's still some things being worked out there. But a couple of proposals and exactly the best way to approach that so that Arkansas can get the uh, federal matching funds that uh, it doesn't want to miss out on. The kind of curious epoch that we're in here, we, we pass legislation so the governor can veto it <laughs> <laughs> to get the private option through, and then we put money into a rainy day fund so that it, the rainy day, hopefully, from the administration standpoint, is just around the corner. Yeah, you know, you know, trying, you know, trying in to, terms of highways. Uh, yeah, in, ter in terms of in terms of highways, you know, trying trying to explain just all the, you know, the weird procedural moves that we saw with with this session in particular. You know, the line uh, line item ve uh, uh, veto uh, move, and yeah, with with rain, with rainy day fund, uh, you know, looking at one time money for for highway needs, um, and it looks like for the special session, the the big fight's going to be over. Uh, the governor's proposal is to you know, tap into some general revenue, some of the uh, ta uh, sales tax revenue from new, new and used vehicles, uh, gradually you know, increasing that over time for, for highways. Um, and you're already hearing some resistance to that, uh, especially from Democrats who are pointing out that you already had a pretty lean, uh, a pretty lean budget where you know, they're saying some needs aren't being met. Um, you know, how are those needs going to be met in the future uh, if you're taking general revenue away is the argument they're making. And I think that's where we're going to see the big fight of the session. Well, that's been the shudder for as long as I can remember. I mean, general revenues were sacrosanct, yeah, exactly. at least in terms of highway needs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when, whenever this idea has come up before, you've seen a lot of resistance from Democrats, from higher education, from advocates for education, human services, who are really worried about what it's going to mean for other needs uh, in the budget. And you're also seeing some pushback now from Democrats and some Republicans who want a longer-term plan, uh, and, and they're talking about, you know, it's time to look at whether or not there should be a tax increase for highways, uh, which it's a very difficult environment to do that when you've got a Republican legislature, a Republican governor who said he doesn't want to raise taxes right now. Uh, but I think that's going to be, the, you know, the other pushback you're going to see is a push for some longer-term plan and looking at some revenue source, uh, either in addition to or other than tapping into general revenue. If anything, I'm a little surprised. I don't know about you guys. I'm a little surprised. And of course, as Andrew noted, the, the, we're, they're beginning to be heard. But the various interest groups and agencies which are directly affected by general revenues, I want, it's been muted up until this point. The, Mr. Hutchinson unveiled, I think, back in what January, or February, Andrew, the, you know, his his proposal for diverting some general revenues over into the highway fund, and I expected an immediate explosion and. <laughs> a few grenades went off, but not yeah, many. Yeah. I, guess, I think we're getting ready to hear it, maybe. Yeah, I think so. You know, in the next couple of weeks, I think you're going to start hearing some of that. Uh, the, you know, the governor has said that he's identified funds to offset that re the re that revenue loss. And you know, initially, the, there had been talk of looking at some economic development incentives that should be cut or eliminated. Uh, he's now said they're instead looking at some investment returns that are expected to generate um, the, uh, money over the years uh, to use that to offset the revenue loss. Um, but I, I'm not sure if that's really going to ease the concerns of some of these groups and, uh, and Democrats who are really worried about you know, what this means for schools, what this means for human services, foster care, other needs over the years. Uh, so I think now that you know, we're heading into that session, I think you're going to start hearing that pushback and kind of seeing, you know, seeing that resistance a lot louder uh, from some of these groups. Well, for the time being, the administration can count and the government can count on an economy that seems to be still recovering. Yeah, uh, we had a revenue report that came out this week for a uh, rather robustly recovering. Yeah. yeah, yeah, looking really good. Uh, it's looking very likely we'll end the year with a pretty decent surplus. Uh, the governor was pleased with that. Uh, the folks over at the uh, State Department of Finance were pleased. Uh, this uh, for April, uh, let's see, net available revenue came in total to $661 million. That's $37 million. Uh, above forecast, also 37 million above the same time last year. And we're looking at uh, right now, uh, it's uh, forecast, uh, we're above forecast by $110 million. So having that extra money uh, really is making uh, folks happy. Yeah.
Andrew? We got, also, we've got unemployment, which is cooking along. The yeah. job creation numbers yeah. that were announced Friday on a national level, hopefully, well, that'll be a bump in the road, but it held steady. The jobless rate held steady. Arkansas has never been better. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the governor's benefited from some, some large economic development projects that have been out, announced recently. You've got the Sun Paper pro project in South Arkansas. You know, a couple other relocations, new projects opening. Uh, so, you know, economically, the state's look, looking, pre, you know, looking pretty good. There's still concern about, among lawmakers about making sure there is, you know, there is a rainy day fund, something to tap into for emergencies, and also that fear of relying too much on one-time money for, for ongoing needs. Uh, you know, they, they tapped into one-time money to restore cuts to libraries, to senior centers the, uh, the session. And so I think there's a fear among, you know, you've heard it from some, uh, some lawmakers that you're using one-time money for things that are going to be going on beyond, you know, beyond you know, one or two years. Uh, so I think that's going to be kind of the fear, even though you've got the surplus building up, you know, what happens in the long run on it. Yeah, but the governor did cite the uh, jobs as being a key factor too in this, and you had uh, strong individual tax collections mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, less uh, than expected in terms of uh, refunds going out. But he said the fact that, yes, 4% uh, was the most recent unemployment, uh, the best in 60 years, I think, in Arkansas, and he said that's really helping drive the economy right now. And to the matter of national politics and Arkansas's niche in it, uh, we had the, the concern among what's left of the Repo who is the Republican <laughs> establishment? I don't know, nationally, but anyway, the concern was always should Mr. Trump prevail in the primaries and win the nomination. The, the, the concern was primarily for the down ballot and still is. Uh, he had at least a half dozen U.S. senators endangered elsewhere. Uh, it was no surprise that already attempts have been made to morph Mr. Bozeman, uh, who is seeking his second term this year, a gentleman from Arkansas, Republican. And his uh, opponent, Connor Eldridge, Democratic nominee, Connor Eldridge, already trying to do that. Yeah, that's, that's right. You know, Connor, uh, Connor Eldridge uh, released an ad this week, a web, web ad, not, not a TV ad, about two minutes long, and basically featured a whole lot of clips of uh, tr uh, Donald Trump making you know, offensive or derogatory comments about women. You know, a lot of many of which I can't say on public television, <laughs> uh, but needless to say, included clips from Howard Stern's show. And it's a really striking ad, and it ends with audio of Senator Bozeman saying he'll support Trump uh, as as the nominee. Uh, it's gotten a lot of national attention, which I think was the intent of it. You know, this is a race that's really not viewed as a competitive race nationally. But this was a way for Eldridge to get some national attention, and I'm, I'm assuming some national fundraising in here. Yeah. And it's kind of seen as a template for these more competitive races nationally of you know, way, you know, ways to try to drag, drag down uh, your Republicans who aren't you know, you know, full-throated supporters of, of Trump but still saying they'll support the nominee. Uh, so I think this is kind of the model of what you're going to see in a lot of other states, and most likely it's going to be a theme in this race here. I'm not sure if it's going to work in a state that's gone as, as red as Arkansas, but it's something we're going to see more of nationally, at least. Yeah, and Senator Bozeman hasn't, you know, been very vocal about the presidential campaign. He's just sat back and been an observer, but he's taken the approach of a lot of Democrat or a lot of Republicans just saying that they will support whoever is the eventual nominee. And I think that's uh, that very well. Well, that's more than a lot of <laughs> national Republicans. <laughs> that's true because you do have uh, a lot that are coming out strongly saying that they, at this point, are not going to uh, support or make any public uh, statements supporting Donald Trump right now. Uh, he had the governor this week uh, reiterate that he, too, will uh, support Trump as the uh, parent uh, nominee. Uh, the governor had said uh, back February 24th in an interview aired nationwide on NPR that Donald Trump's words were scary, said he doesn't feel that Trump is displaying the appropriate temperament. But he said then that he would support whoever is the nominee. And his message really hasn't changed at all. He said essentially the uh, same thing on Thursday, that the uh, uh, Trump has not carried a level of civility appropriate for a presidential campaign, but reiterated that, yes, we do need to still support uh, whoever is the nominee. You had most uh, Arkansas Republicans backing uh, the former governor, Mike Huckabee's campaign early on. And after that, uh, a lot of them went for Ted Cruz. And now you have even Or people, Rubio. Or, or Rubio. The governor yeah. had uh, hoped his endorsement of Rubio would 
sway some uh, people, might have gotten a little bit of uh, support for Rubio. Trump, he won Arkansas, wasn't a big win, but uh, you now have a lot of Republicans really trying to figure out the best approach here. Well, looking at the map uh, just a couple of nights ago, just to make sure I was right, yeah, there is in the southeastern quadrant of the United States one legislative chamber controlled by Democrats, and that's the Kentucky Senate. Every Wells, <laughs> it's, it's just red. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting you know the position. And Mr. Trump, by the way, yeah. captured every, except for Texas. Mr. Cruz is Texas. Yeah, it's it's an interesting position. Arkansas Republicans are in now. Yeah, after eight years of Democrats basically having to keep you know, President Obama at at, at at arms arms length, I think you're going to kind of see the reverse scenario for Republicans here, where you'll see all these statements like the governor's statement. They make a point of saying, "I support the Republican Party. I support the nominee." They may mention Trump. If they do, they do it. They, they do it in passing. It's a lot more about the party, or a lot more about saying we we don't want Hillary Clinton in the White House. Uh, so they're making it more about the party, or more about you know anti-Clinton uh, sentiment. No, what? It's uh, it really is a lot of soul searching. It's interesting just to see people like Nate Bell, who uh, left the Republican Party last year, uh, saying that. He couldn't support uh, Mr. Trump, saying he plans to vote for the Libertarian uh, candidate. Uh, so it, it really is for a lot of people, especially if Donald Trump doesn't kind moderate of moderate what, his what, tone a little play bit, nice which or you would expect. But so far, we've seen no sign of him uh, moderating his tone. Or usually, when uh, people express some concerns, other members of the party candidates say, "Well, I'm going to talk to them," and they eventually try to. Uh, find some common ground where people can support the candidate. But that doesn't seem to be happening so far. Got to leave it there. We're out of time. Guys, thanks for coming in. As always, thanks to you for watching. See you next week. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.